Um, I, I, I actually want to thank the New Democratic Party for bringing forward this on their opposition day, because I think this is the kind of thing we need to do. We need to discuss this. We need to talk about it. We need to clarify it. We need to get to the truth of everything. And so, you know, when I heard of those children, and I know that um, my, my, uh, my colleague, uh, Minister Miller, just said that he cannot put himself in the place of those families and those children. But I do think always when I think of the residential school, of what it would be like for my three boys to have been taken away from me when they were five years old or six years old, to be told I was a bad parent to never see me again, uh, to be made certain that, that their upbringing and everything that they believed in within their family with their parents was a lie and was untrue, to feel ashamed of who they were, to perhaps never see me again, to perhaps never know what it is to have the love of a parent and to live in an institution where they were abused, et cetera. And that always makes me tear up because I think of how horrid that is. And when I think of those children who are buried in the mass grave in Kamloops, I have to think about how they perhaps long to see their parents, how they perhaps long to be home, how they felt about being ashamed every single day about being Indian and, being, and, and, and therefore having to change who they are. Uh, the, the, I, and I'm not just thinking about that, but I, I must tell you that um, uh, in 2020, 2010 and 2011, I was chairing the Status of Women Committee, and we looked at the issue of um, violence against Indigenous women in society, on reserve and off reserve. And uh, we went across the country, all different political parties, and we sat and we listened to the testimony of the women, the grandmothers, the women, the grandmothers, and the elders. And I will tell you that every single political party, every single member of that committee did not have a single day in which they didn't sit there with tears unabashedly streaming down their cheeks to what they heard, about what they heard about the injustice of it all. Some of them came in saying things that we hear from other Canadians, you know, oh, look at me, I came here with no money in my pockets and look at how I survived. Why are these people not able to do this? And they stopped saying that after the second meeting because they couldn't bear to listen to that truth. Now, I wanted to also note that while we are that committee traveling across the country, I don't think we ever had more than two people in the room who were non-Indigenous. Canadians didn't care. They didn't want to come. They didn't want to listen. This was not an important thing for them to hear. And so when I hear people saying that when they're in school, they weren't taught, they didn't know, uh, et cetera, I think that is that collective um, responsibility that we bear for not caring for pretending we didn't know or for not wanting to know. And so I think that is an important thing that I want to park there. The fact that most Canadians don't know, the fact that most Canadians contribute to societal discrimination against Indigenous people, calling them names, thinking that they are in fact unworthy of the help or of anything that they, they don't understand the intergenerational trauma. And, and I, I must say that, you know, I, I have to look at South Africa. South Africa began apartheid because they came here, they saw what we were doing, they saw the carding system to be an Indian, they saw the residential schools, they saw the reserves, and they went back and did that in South Africa. They borrowed that for the way that the Afrikaners treated um, the, the, the majority Black community. And I think that the, when we look at the parallels between South Africa, the, they learned apartheid from us, but we learned something from them. We learned about truth and reconciliation for, from them. And we're now talking about truth and reconciliation here. We've been talking about it for a long time. And when the people, the, 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 the survivors went and spoke, they mostly spoke to indig an indigenous commission. There still weren't Canadians there listening, learning, 
and being heartbroken by what they heard, because I don't believe there's a Canadian that wouldn't be heartbroken by those stories. And so I want to talk a little bit about truth. We've talked about reconciliation. And I want to make sure that as we use this opportunity to speak together as a parliament, that we resist the tendency to want to have a quick and dirty fix. Then we can go about our business feeling, oh, look at us, we just did all the right things. You know, we can just feel non-guilty. We can assuage all of the feelings that we have. Uh, I don't think we should do that. And I don't think we should use this horrible, tragic, painful um, findings of the, bod the, the bodies of children in Kamloops to take it and become partisan and political. I think we would actually be desecrating the bodies of those children if we build partisanship out of this, if we make political gain out of this. I would love to hear us talk about this. And I would love to hear us not say, and this is what you must do, because aren't we then doing what uh, the colonial uh, and churches and everything did, told everybody what to do? Do you not think we've told Indigenous people what to do for long enough? Do you not think that reconciliation is a long journey? We learned that from South Africa. They still have not finished that journey. They're still on that journey in South Africa. I think the point I'm trying to make here is that we have to be very careful about how we use this tragedy to, 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 to impose and to continue to pretend that we know best for indigenous people. Reconciliation is taking a long time because we have to work and for the first time, listen, respect what indigenous communities want. Indigenous communities across this country uh, have different journeys right now. Some of them are ready for reconciliation and self-government. Some of them have a long way to go. And so we need to be patient and to work with them in respect. And I know as government, we love to say, oh, let's get this done tomorrow. Let's get this bill passed. Let's... This is not what this is about. This is about a journey. And I, and I wanted to talk a little bit about all the, the, the tears and the flowers and, and the outpouring of grief by Canadians. And this is good. This is cathartic for everybody. But at the same time, we know that the next tragedy that comes, everybody will move on to a different site and put flowers and, and that grief will, will be just as great for that new thing as it is for this thing. This is not simply an incident that we must grieve over. This has been going on for a long time. The intergenerational pain, the intergenerational grief, the fact that we as Canadians never mentioned government or, or institutions, but as Canadians, every day we judge Indigenous people. We are responsible as Canadians for that systemic discrimination that, oh, look at that person, they're probably drunk. I heard in these, in these uh, witnesses that I heard from in that committee how they would take somebody to hospital and the hospital would say, and the person would be in pain. And they talked about an incident where a young man had a, an abscess tooth and he was in such pain that he was, he was just crying all the time. And, and the nurses and the doctor said, oh, bring him back when he's sober. We are responsible for that. This is not just about what a government did. And this is about what churches did. This is about what everybody did because they thought we knew best. I don't want us to do that. I don't want us to always know best. I want us to heed as we are already doing what the path to reconciliation is and take the patience to walk with indigenous people, to listen to indigenous people, to heed what they're telling us, not just to listen, but to heed it, to go at the pace that they are ready to go at. And in the interim to support and to heal and to make sure that we build together a new society. And, and I, I wanna talk about the truth part. We've talked a lot about reconciliation. You know, in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa, the truth was told. The truth was told in public fora. The truth was told about the reality of what witnesses came to say what they had suffered under that horrible uh, regime. And everybody heard. The Afrikaners heard, the white population heard, everybody heard. It was broadcast on television, everybody heard that truth. And what we need to do is now, Go back to the schools, teach that truth. But what we need today 
other than teddy bears and flowers and quick fixes that we're trying to talk about, we, all of us, every single Canadian in this country needs to own that truth. We need to own that shame. We need to own that guilt. We need to say to Indigenous people, we have continued, we did, and have continued. We are sorry. We're not just sorry, but we want to take the burden of guilt onto us. We want to take that shame and carry it with you because that's how it should go. And, you know, I, I just want to read something from a... a, a, a no, member's time is up. Um, uh, I'm going to go to uh, questions and comments. Uh, the honour member uh, for Skeena Buckley Valley. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I listened uh, with great interest to the remarks from the member for Vancouver Center. And, and some of what she said concerned me uh, because I believe she was suggesting that it is inappropriate for Parliament to call on the government to take immediate and substantial action in this moment. She, she said at one part, point that we should heed what Indigenous people are telling us. The Indigenous people that are speaking to me are telling me that the progress on implementing the truth and reconciliation calls to action has been far too slow, that the actions of this government have not measured up to, to what is required. And my question to her is whether she will support this motion, which I believe very closely reflects the calls we are hearing from Indigenous people, that this government should not be fighting Indigenous kids in court, that they should be investing far more and taking far more dramatic actions to implement the calls to action. Will she support this motion? The Honourable Member for Vancouver Centre. I think it's interesting that we just talked about listening and heeding what people were saying. I didn't say that. That is not what I said. I didn't say that the Parliament should not have a say in moving forward. I do think we've taken a long time. But we have taken the time that we were asked to take as we moved along with every single First Nations community as they were ready to move forward. We have said that we would do that and we've been doing it. What I, what I wanted to talk a little bit about, let's, let's not run off and say, we have to do it now, we must do it within a certain period of time, because that means that we're not listening. We're not listening to what Indigenous people are telling us about some of the things they need to do. And, and the Honourable Member knows that no one is, is taking Indigenous kids to court. We know that the, that the uh, Human Rights Tribunal made some, uh, made some recommendations that were outside of their scope. That's why we are having a, um, a, a, a judicial inquiry into this. We do uh, have to move on to other questions. Uh, questions, questions et commentaires. L'honorable député de Trois-Rivières. The honourable member for Trois-Rivières. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for Vancouver Centre for her heartfelt speech. Here in Trois-Rivières, there was a there was an event to and there was an event to underscore what's happened in Joliet for what happened with Joyce Echequan. And we can see that the community cares a lot about what's happening with indigenous people. Does my colleague believe that indigenous people should be consulted and be stakeholders in future cases that are similar to what happened in Kamloops? Absolutely. I think we need to give the assistance that's needed monetarily and in other ways, or mental health, or healing, um, support systems for families, um, to be able to go across the country and find where there are other similar graves with lost children who never went home. We need to move forward to help. That's a thing we can do now. But I'm speaking of some of the things within the reconciliation package and in this motion that, that has asking for things to do that would mean that we will be imposing things on Indigenous communities that are not ready. The Indigenous peoples of Canada are not one amorphous mass of people. They are made up of different communities 
who have different First Nations groups, who have different paces by which they are ready to move forward. Bigger griefs, smaller griefs, they have a lot of things. We have to listen and work with them. That's what I'm trying to say, Madam Speaker. And I, and I just wanted, I really would like you to know that, that there is somebody called Getswato uh, Slahut. You know him as Chief Dan George. And I will always remember what he had to say. He said, many have been shamed of their Indian ways by scorn and ridicule. My culture is like a wounded deer that has crawled away into the forest to bleed and die alone. The only thing that can help us is genuine love. A love that forgives the terrible sufferings your culture has imposed on us when it's swept over us like a wave on a beach. But a love that forgets and lifts up its head and sees in your eyes, you Canadians, in your eyes, an answering love of trust and acceptance. I think that's what I was trying to talk about here. It is not about quick fixes, immediate things. It's not about us all grieving at this one moment and forgetting about it as we move on to something new. It's about that steady moving forward. And it's about Canadians taking the guilt and the blame and the shame and saying all of us, even if we were only born 10 years ago, have to carry that. Have to acknowledge it.